Civil liberties and rights in America occurred during the last half of the 20th century, so much that one could say the birth of a new nation came as a result of the many protests held during that time and the legislation passed. The origin of the phrase Jim Crow came from the song Jump Jim Crow. It was the name of a popular dance in the 1820s. Jim Crow became an expression meaning African American in 1838, and from this the laws of racial segregation became known as Jim Crow laws. Example of Jim Crow laws are segregation of public schools, public places, public transportation, restrooms, restaurants, and drinking fountains for whites and blacks. The laws managed how the blacks lived. U.S. Supreme Court ruled against segregated schools and Brown v. Board of Education in 1954, and the Montgomery bus boycott challenging segregated public transportation started in 1955. These two important events initiated the beginning of the end for segregation in Alabama. The Jim Crow laws set off all the rules. Civil rights leaders as Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, and Rosa Parks led the nation through the next 20 years. Martin Luther King organized a bus boycott in Montgomery, Alabama that lasted for 382 days with 90% participation in black people. The courts finally ruled that segregation of city bus services was unconstitutional. The success of that boycott sparked years of nonviolent civil rights demonstrations, first in the South and later all over the country. Rosa Parks was known throughout the world as the mother of civil rights movement. Rosa Parks changed the course of African American history when she refused to give up her seat to a white man on December 1, 1955. The Minister of the Nation of Islam, Malcolm X, tried to achieve rights for blacks that he called human rights, not just civil ones. During the march in Washington, Malcolm could not understand why the blacks were so excited about a demonstration run by whites in front of a statue of a president who had been dead for years and who didn't like the blacks when he was alive. Malcolm X was assassinated on February 21, 1965 while addressing an organization of Afro-American Unity rally in Manhattan. The pursuit of civil rights and liberties has been a common theme throughout American history. In American history, we have fought for those inalienable rights. The tide of change and accomplishment goes in and out on civil rights issues. Who was Rosa Parks? Rosa Parks, also known as the mother of civil rights movement, was born in Tuckasegee, Alabama. Her given name was Rosa Louise McCauley. Her family was very diverse with different cultures, a blend of African American, Scott Irish, Cherokee, Greek. Rosa attended an all-black school. It was only one room in the house. It wasn't a nice or wealthy school, just very basic and low budget. Sixty students and one teacher. She has always dealt with segregation as a young girl in Alabama. When it rained, they used what was called the streetcar, and even then the blacks had to sit in the back. Rosa dropped out of the 11th grade to care for her mother and her grandmother. In 1932, Rosa married a man by the name of Raymond Parks, a well-known member of National Association Advancement of Colored People, better known as NAACP. There, they helped lawyers fight charges against black people. In 1943, Rosa became associated with the Civil Rights Movement in Montgomery. At the time, when Rosa was living in Alabama, they had what was called the Jim Crow Laws. This included separate seating on transportation for the public. The buses had sections, a white-only section and a blacks-only section. A quote of Rosa's was, I'd see the bus pass by every day, but to me, it was a way of life. It wasn't this way everywhere like the time she worked at the Maxwell Air Force Base. It was non-segregated. She was working for a federal government. When World War II was over, Rosa, as well as the NAACP voters, fought for equality for everyone, and this was when the white people decided this would not happen. Equality 
They liked their world the way it was. The day the bus crisis began, Rosa boarded the bus like any other normal day. She sat in the back row, which was relatively her normal seat. The front was designated for the whites only. The bus began to crowd, and Rosa was asked to move because the whites had nowhere to sit. She refused against her will. She was arrested and placed in jail overnight for violating the segregation law. Bringing attention to the media because she was found guilty, all the blacks decided to have a boycott. Its president, Martin Luther King Jr., was elected. No black people were to ride the bus to school or work. They did not ride the buses for days. The bus companies lost money, but soon thereafter, blacks began to ride again. It was rough at first, but eventually things began to run smoothly, and Rosa, Martin Luther King Jr., and many other people got their point across. Because of them, that is why all people are able to ride front, back, or middle of the bus. Rosa is no longer alive today. She died October 24, 2005. Her remembrance is still in effect from her middle school to a boulevard named after her.